And we are back with another Gutter Fighting Secrets Tactical Podcast, guys. We have Sam the Legionnaire back on the podcast. As you guys know, we first met Sam while I was traveling in France, and we happened to get together and conduct an interview all about life in the French Foreign Legion. Sam obviously was a Legionnaire of a long time, and he now is stateside again. He is out of the Legion and back in the States. Sam, welcome back onto the podcast, man. Thanks for having me. Good to uh, be a part of the podcast again. Yeah, we're stoked to have you on, and we're stoked to talk about life after the Legion, dude. So, mm-hmm. you know, you you spent a long time in the Legion. For those of you guys and girls who haven't yet seen our first interview, I highly recommend you go check it out. I mean, we go into extreme detail about what life is like in the Legion, how do you get into it, all of the things that everyone always wonders, including myself. Like, it's a romantic thing. It's a cool guy thing. Like, and I know that you were in, you spent a little bit of time in the military before, you know, here here in the States, and then you went into the Legion. And now you are a married man and you're back in the States. So first of all, welcome back home, my friend. Yeah, it's good to be back home. You know, there's uh, so many differences of being back home, being in the States than Europe. Some good things, some bad things, but um, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to be back home. I'm happy to be married. So uh, yeah, civilian life, you know just uh, trying to transition back into civilian life. It's, uh, it's different, you know, because I've been in the military for a long time. U.S. military and Legion combined would be 11 years. So, you know, it's um, definitely a transition that uh, I got to take slowly, but it's going well. It's going well, man. Yeah, so you've been, I mean, you've been literally a soldier for most of your adult life. Um, Since 18, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so like, do you find yourself kind of like waking up and and like being like, whoa, what the fuck do I do now? Or or are you enjoying it? I'm, well, yeah, like you enjoy, for me, like the first few weeks was cool, like just waking up and not doing anything. But then you're like, all right, I need a routine. Like, I got to have a schedule. Like, all right, like today I'll wake up, I'll work, and like I'll read a book for like 30 minutes. Like whatever book, I got to read something, got to stay off my phone. Can't be just be scrolling on Instagram like this entire time. All right, then I'll read my book. Then I'll do like dry fires or something. I, I, I still try to stay in like the military mind. Um, you know, it's a big part of me. So I still like to do the tactics. I still like to train and shoot, uh, working out as well. So like, it's good to have a routine, at least for me. I don't like just sitting around doing nothing. It's not good for your mind. It's not good for my mind, at least. So definitely setting up routine, just, you know, a lot chiller than being in the Legion. That's for sure. But it's nice to have a routine for me. I I like routine. And that's one thing I admire, man, is you're, you're out of Legion now. You're out of the military, but you're keeping up. You're keeping up with your skill sets that you've honed over the past 11 years. Yeah, you know, dry firing. You're doing your IMTs. You're going ahead and work keeping. You know your PT and your workouts good. Like you really, it seems like you really want to continue and not let anything that you've really worked so hard for up until now get get rusty. Yeah, yeah, it's a big part of my life, and I know a lot of guys that get out of the Legion or the U.S. military and they just go completely civil, like they just join a you know just become electrician or um, you know. Uh, a mechanic of some sort or they get into like medicine or whatever what have you but for me I've always been military minded and I I like it you know I like I like the gunfighter community um you know I I I follow a lot of guys um where we're a big community or sorry a small community but know a lot of guys and um for me it's just a big it's been a big part of my life and I I like I like doing it. I still like doing it. I like practicing all these things. Um, I like to stay relevant in tactics and, and all that. Um, it's, it's great. And I, I want to do work in the future like this. So that's why I want to stay relevant as well. And you, you do have plans at some point, um, you know, either private security company, something like that, if I'm correct. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we can talk more about that if you cool. want. Yeah, let's jump into that, man. So, I mean, I know that we were talking offline about you know, your plans in the future, um, you know, for, for possibly going somewhere and doing something with a private security company or working for, you know, working for certain people. Jump yes. in there. Okay, so I uh, made some contacts out far east. Um, there's this country called uh, Armenia, 
Um, I've made some contacts over there. I'm going to be kind of vague about it because of OPSEC, but a uh, good, beautiful country. I uh, visited it this past summer. Um, uh, you know, the, one of the oldest Christian countries of, uh, of the world. Uh, I advise everyone to to look up Armenia if you don't know much about it. Um, they're currently uh, at uh, wit's end with Azerbaijan, and it's technically technically not a war right now, but um, it's, it's they've gone to war in the past, and um, they need help. Let's just put it that way. They need help. Um, they're very proud people. I'm a Christian. Um, I felt like God has um, directed me to help Armenia. Um, in a way, and it's very fulfilling work. Like when I went out there this past summer, it was very fulfilling. I loved it, loved the Armenian people, very friendly people. So I've kind of found some things out there and we'll see how it goes. Like uh, if, if it all goes well, you know, I'll report it back and I'll get more into detail if, um, if I can. But yeah, so I found some work out there and uh, this next summer I'll be taking a trip and we'll see how it pays out. We'll see how it pays out. I'm I'm excited for you, man. I really think that it's gonna. I think that it. I got a good feeling about it. I'll put it to you like that. And I think that it's cool that you want to go and help other Christians. You know, I mean, it really speaks to your to your warriorship. I'm gonna put it like that. Your warriorship. I mean, you I'll see. I wonder with a sword. Say again. I wonder with a sword. Oh well, that's exactly what you are, man. I mean, a mercenary and really the truest freaking definition of it, to be honest, which is. You know, it's cool guy stuff. I mean, you 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 went from the U.S., then you did went fucking worked as a private soldier for France, and then now you're going to do it for Armenia. And it's it's cool to see someone like you because, you know, it really harkens back to the ancient times of our forefathers, right? I mean, Knights Templar or Knights Hospital or, or whatever you want to say, you know, all of these different groups that we all kind of um, idolize throughout history. Well, this is still being done today. I mean, it's, it's still very much the way that warriors – or like you you leave one thing and you go into another and you're finding a good cause and i know that you and i talked about the legion and you were yeah. getting a little bit kind of disheartened with how things were going in the legion which yeah. might have had you know a reason to do with you leaving do you want to jump into that at all sure um yeah like just to um go back on the armenia thing real fast um i've always been like looking for like a good cause more than um than it's more that's more for me than the money. So that's another reason, like I could go, um, there's plenty of opportunities, private contracting, uh, making six figures, you know, um, you know, working for a big company or something like that. But I wasn't looking for that. And um, luckily I made some, found some friends, uh, made some contacts in Romania and it really interested me. And then, yeah, there we go. Boom. Um, went over there this past summer and, you know, found a good community and, We'll see how that pays off, like I said. Yeah, but yeah. just to jump in here real quick and be clear that, you know, when I said, you know, mercenary and all that, it's really not about the money for you, though. It is about your faith. It is about doing the right thing. And I, I just want to I want to give you the chance to kind of reiterate that to people is it's not about, you know, getting a paid a six figure income. It's about doing the right thing for you. Yes, for me. Yes. You know. Obviously, you have to take care of the bills. Um, you got to take care of your family. Um, luckily, my, that when I found in Romania, we'll do that. You know what I mean? If all pays out, if all goes well, yes. I mean, but it's not just like, um, and I had a lot of guys reach out to me about the Romanian thing when I was there. And I was telling them, you know, some of these guys are just like, well, how does it pay? How does it pay? It was the first question. Does it pay well? And I'm like, you know, look, I'm not, it's, I, I mean, I understand, you know, guys want to get paid. But I'm just like, look, man, for me, it's not about the pay. It's about the cause. It's about the Armenian struggle, um, Christianity, like what have you. Um, and so I have to just be like, you know, if, if you want to, like, I, I can like get you in. Like, I, you know, I, I need some good guys to help me out. Like the, the more the merrier for me. But um, it's not going to pay, you know, what you think. You know, it's a, it's, it's a poor country. It's not the United States. It's not NATO. It's not EU. Um, so it's obviously not, you're not going to get six figures, but I mean, it's, it's a wonderful experience and they're great people. So why not? You know what I mean? That's, that's my take. Do you feel like Christianity is under attack these days in general? Yes, definitely. Look at the, <laughs> look at the direction of the United States. Yeah. Let me put it this way. Um, I went, I went to church today, right. 
And the title of the message was In God We Trust. It was talking about how to manage your money, tithing, giving tithes to, to God. And the pastor was like, this is really good. Like, I forgot what year, but it was President Eisenhower who signed a bill putting, um, uh, saying that we're going to put In God We Trust on all the money. Like all our currency will have like In God We Trust. I forgot what year it was. I think it was in the 50s. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but anyways, he was saying, look, like, can you imagine them trying to pass that bill now? Like, oh, we're going to put, like, people would lose their minds. Oh, yeah. Like, it would be anarchy. Like, it, just, it wouldn't the, pass. the problem wouldn't pass. with what's going on in the country right now is, man, it's like our country was founded on a deep connection with God, with you God can, people, Exactly. People will argue that, but no. All our founding fathers believed in God. Like, it, it, you know, like what, what have you might not be like, you know, some people think like hardcore Christianity, you know, it, like we're all, they were all hardcore Christians. Like they have to be hardcore, like Christianity, like Bible thumpers. No, they did have a deep um, relationship with God. They de definitely all did. All those guys had, had definitely a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, they're all, they broke away from the English church because they didn't like how England was, was, was treating them as far as uh, their religion went, they, they went, that was one of the reasons why they left, you know, to go to, to the United States. So yeah, like uh, Christianity, Christianity has always been a part of the United States. It's, it's always well, I mean, the old legend goes that our founding fathers were originally thinking about making our, our official language Hebrew, you know, whether or not that's true, I don't, I don't think it necessarily is, but it's an old, it's an old legend and it shows how much they really, I mean, they respected the Bible, they respected the Hebrew traditions, this is all, you know, even that look at that verse in the Bible, you know, those who ble bless Israel, I will bless those who curse Israel, I will curse. And right. you know, for a long time. Yeah, we really had a just a deep, deep connection with with spirituality, Christianity specifically in this country. And look how much our country has flourished. And now we're turning our back on it. And we're not doing so well. We're not doing very well at all. But you know what, like, I think it's all part of the plan um like you want to harp on the end times here i know like people like like we've always been hearing like the time end times the times are coming like 50 years ago people like yeah, yeah. oh you know we're the end times you know we're the end times you know even like my grandparents during world war ii i'm, I'm sure yours as well you know they were in the end times but like things are getting really hairy right now and uh i can definitely see a lot of biblical things uh, happening so i think it's for me for my beliefs is like it's all part of the plan like it's just going to get worse to the point, uh, like we're going to implode, you know, we, it's just, we're just going to be like Rome. We're like, we're, we're basically Rome with Wi-Fi, with internet. Well, in yeah, we're Rome with Wi-Fi, man. Like if you look at even, I mean, just look at the way that our government, again, hearkening back to our founding fathers, we were structured this way, right? With the Senate and all of this stuff. But like literally the way we are going right now is just like Rome before the fall of Rome. There's like, you can make a God society, man. Yeah, exactly. You know, God of society, uh, inflation. Um, we have our our troops spread out all over the world. You know, it's it's just like the Romans in a way. Really, it's it's it is sexual immorality up the wazoo, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. Saw it. You know, look look at all this uh, this transgenderism, and I don't know how many different uh, um, sexualities you, you can be now. It's it it's just it's not scientific. Uh, you don't yeah. have to. I don't have to be a scientist or biologist sorry uh to tell you what sex i am or what sex you can do <laughs> like, if you don't you don't yeah. have to be a christian uh to know you know there's only two genders like it's not and it's look, not look like, at all these other countries they're laughing at us right now i just watched putin's address to his nation it was like an hour and a half and he mentioned it a few times where he's like look at the what these people are doing over there he like harps on that a lot yeah and you know i'm not a putin supporter either bro like i'm anti uh I mean, anti-Putin, anti-Russia, like, you know, there's a lot of Russians that don't like their government. I have a lot of Russian friends from being in the Legion. Also, I have a lot of Ukrainian friends. I have a, a lot of a big uh, Slavic community. A lot of the majority of Legionnaires is, uh, is Eastern European. Mm. It's slowly beginning to change now because of the war in Ukraine. Mm. But when I joined, it was lots of Ukrainians, lots of Russians, lots of Poles, uh slovakia all the, a lot of eastern european countries you know but so 
when I joined, I learned a lot about their culture and how they think. And I mean, and a lot of things like matched with how I thought. And like, that's what always also uh, got me interested in going East. I'm so tired of the West, man. I can't bro. like, you know, the America that we knew is no longer exists. Like it's done. I grew up in the nineties, you know, like, I mean, like, you know, there was no like technology. The technology wasn't as, as good as it was now. Like I didn't grow up without, a, I grew up without a smartphone. Like I was yeah. outside, you know, people having fun, like all that's, all that's gone, man. It's just like America feels so evil. Yeah. And like, for example, in a country like Armenia, they don't have that, that discuss that, that transgenderism, like they don't have this, this gay pride, you know, that they're, they're Christians, great values, great tr traditional values over there, great culture, you know, like, it's still like, you know, like, I guess like, it kind of would be like 1950s or 1940s America in a way, mm -hmm. you know, what have you, something like that, how we used to be. But you know what I mean? So that's, that's what also like, I see these guys from the East and, and you know, a lot, I agree with them with a lot of things they say. So like, that's one of the other reasons why I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm done, kind of done with the West and, and Western Europe is what, just Western Europe and the U S as well. Like, it's just not a place that I feel comfortable with. I just don't agree with the, what they're teaching anymore. You know, I don't know how we can have turned our back on our culture so hard. I mean, it's such a proud, beautiful traditions and culture that the Western European people have. I mean, we built like, look at what we've built we've made the world what it is and yeah. now we're just what we're trying to apologize for it why i wow. just blame it on um i don't know there's a lot of evil a lot of whatever whatever you want to call them the elites the globalists um trying to get this one world order type thing uh I, i'll keep on bringing that up like I, that's that's what it is like for me like it's all part of the plan like that's what they want they just want us to forget about um our culture and our traditional values that, that that's like radical now you know what i mean like yeah that's like that's bad like you know that's misogynistic and you know like uh, i i don't know uh, i i could go into we could go into that all day but yeah i mean, I mean well, it's just funny to me like a, a a man like you right you've been a warrior since young age and you, you know french foreign legion military this and that and now like literally this is like one of the most productive things a man could do with his life is protect others you know, protect the weak, help the poor. That's how I felt. That's how and, I felt. And now in. all of a sudden, this is a bad thing. How, you know, it's all about, it's all about money. It's all about greed. I mean, look at the, look at, okay. We're in Ukraine, man. Like it was like, Oh, we must, uh, it was before like, Oh, we have to protect Ukraine. Now it's like, Oh, Ukraine must win. But you know, like at what cost, like look at all these military and military industrial complex, these industries that, that were that billions of dollar industry, you know, like that, that we're, we're helping out with, with this war in, in, in Ukraine. And technically, oh, bro, I watch the market every day, bro. And I'm seeing, you know, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, like just up, 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 up. We're profiting off of the what's Ukrainians' going on here. lives yeah. and, and yeah. Russians' lives. You know, it's, it's terrible. It's sad. And you know, I asked you before we jumped on here, like, bro, I'm surprised you're not in Ukraine right now. And you told me, look, I'm fucking not pro Ukraine. And I'm not pro Russia. Like, that's not really I, my fight. Listen, so I have me, man, I have Ukrainian friends that are fighting in Ukraine. Like, m m good friend of mine, like, we served, we were in the same platoon, knew him for three years, dude, did everything together, partied, went on missions together. You know, I talk to him still. I'm like, I miss you, man. But he sees what I post on my my uh, my social media, um, like I'm anti anti giving uh, I'm anti Ukraine, like or I, I believe Ukraine should should defend themselves. But I don't I disagree with sending money. We we can't do that. We should stay neutral, and it is what it is. It's sad, but we don't have the the capacity right now we're look at look at we need to be worrying about america first than than other countries like we we uh, the u.s has always done this we've always played police we're trying to police the world but i just disagree with it um and and he deserted actually uh when the war started i he, he left in february like i i carried it i helped him carry his luggage it, he took uh, to take the train to paris and i was sad to see him go and i've had a lot of ukrainian friends who deserted to go fight for their country a lot of westerners um in the legion that deserted to, to fight for ukraine which i disagree with and um yeah like it's 
it sucks. It sucks for Ukrainians. Like they're the ones who are, who are, who are, they're the ones who, who, who are getting, you know, shit on right now. <laughs> the, the civilians, you know, it's, it's bad for them, but we're adding on, like we're prolonging this war with, with Russia. We're just going to do it to like, when, how, and, and at what cost, like, and, and until when, well, that's, we're just going it, to, it, after it's been a year, you know, like, and we thought we were, it's not just more Slava Ukraine, bro. Slava Ukraine. Like, it's just, it's yeah, been a lot to it's like time, billions and billions and billions of dollars just going to them. And who knows how much they're embezzling and putting in their pockets. And man, it's like really bad right now. It's really, really bad. Um, yeah. So, all it's, right. Uh, so let's jump into this real quick, Sam. Like, deserting okay this yeah. the the word brings a bad connotation to your mind but like when you say deserting the legion like what is actually what does this mean and then what are the ramifications when somebody actually does desert the legion all right so during when the war started um i remember uh well just to go back on the ukraine part they like allowed um i forgot exactly because it's, it's been over a year I'd have to look up ex what, what the general said of the Legion at the time. They gave like the Ukrainians 40 days or something. Like, okay, if you need to go back to Ukraine to like take care of your families or pull them out or something, you're allowed to, but like just 40 days, you have to come back. Um, it was something like that. Um, but like I said, I can't remember. You'd have to ask a Ukrainian maybe or something. They gave them something like that. I do remember. It, or it was on a case-by-case -case basis, something like that. But I remember they were preparing, like, the Ukrainians on my regiment, they, like, they were, like, they taken all their gear, like, the, the their, their platoon, like, the cat, the, they were just letting them go. Like, understand, like, go, go do what you got to do. And I'm sure if they would have came back, if they would have come back in 30 days, 40 days, they would have accepted them back, for sure. No doubt in my mind. Um, but, no, they didn't, obviously. They're still over there fighting. However. For the rest of the the people, you know, like deserting is bad. Yes, you know, and, and, and um, the U.S. military like going AWOL, you know, it's a federal crime. You know, like when you sign that contract, you know, the government owns you, and if you desert and go AWOL, you know, the federal government, you're a federal. That's a federal investigation. Like the the feds are looking for you. You will get arrested. You will go to jail. We'll serve. Now, not everyone serves jail time. I know some guys who went AWOL and they didn't get jail time. Um, that's on a case by case basis as well, I believe. I don't know too much about that because I didn't desert um, the US military. But, anyways, in the Legion, you're not a French citizen. So, when you join the French Foreign Legion, you know, like I talked about this, they change your name, they change your identity, they take your passport. So, um, you are living under that fake identity. And while you have that fake identity, you're not supposed to leave France. Like, that's the rules. Of course, like you can, people still leave France, but without your passport, you can only go so far. So like, you can't leave the EU. Like I couldn't fly back to America without my passport, but I took trips in, in the EU. Like I went to Italy, I went to Spain, like as, it's like kind of don't, uh, as long, like uh, out of sight, out of mind. Like if they don't see you, like you can't get in trouble type thing. Um, but anyways, once you get your real identity back and like, let's say you do desert, Yes, you get a criminal charge. You know what I mean? But it's kind of a joke. Like you, they, they, you have like thirty days, more or less. Okay, until you like you're considered like done. Okay, so like if you're gone for like a week, you can come back, and like two weeks even, you can come back, and even a bit longer. That's that as well. Like there's nothing set in stone. There's no like rules and regulations. It's the Legion is a mess. So like everything's on a case by case and like the Legion's seriously hurting for people. So I, I would even say like, even like, even like a month or two, like they'd take you back. If you were a good soldier, maybe they'd probably take you back. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, so they, they, they file criminal charge with you um, in like the Marseille uh, police. It's not federal or it's not international. It stays in France. Um, and yeah, like if you, let's say for some reason that, um, I don't know, you're somewhere and the, the French uh, police national or the gendarmerie, you know, they, they check your passport. Um, let's say you're going to bar fight. I don't know. You get in some trouble with the police and like they run your passport. 
um and like oh you're you know you're deserted well you're coming with us you know what i mean like they'll come with you they'll they'll question you about it um but if if you if it's been over you know those two months they're not going to send you back the mm. legion's not going to want you back if you deserted if you left in like a week and they found you they might take you back to regiment and you might handle at like repercussions but after like a month or two they're not uh you're not a french citizen and they so like it's it, they can't really do anything um so what they'll might do is send you back to Oban, which is the legion command and you'll sign a few papers like saying like you're out of the legion basically and like they'll, they'll send you on your way like get the fuck out of here you know just that type of thing and that's it but there's no there's no repercussions if you're a french citizen it's different um you can probably you can yeah you can go to jail but the french army has like so many the french military has so many desertions like they don't they can't really do anything with with foreigners you know like and the french the way they set up is a lot differently than the u.s as well like no one's actively looking for you it's just not the same mentality it's a lot you have a lot more freedom in europe anyways Mm -hmm. so um it's not people like think oh you can never go back into france you can fly back into france but if they run you you know they're going to see that they might question you they might take you in but you're not going to jail uh it's not like this big like thing like they, they can't they really can't do anything you're not a french citizen like i said you're still i'm an, like if i were to have deserted or something i'm an american citizen they can't do anything. so like you know there's no benefits then that you're missing out on or anything like that i guess um like so if you try to work in france you that might that might fuck you that might you know bite you in the ass later um that might come up that you deserted Mm. um in the eu i know guys like european guys that deserted i know french guys that deserted uh and and, you know like they're doing well like they're not working and like for federal some federal organization in france but nothing has come to bite them back in the ass um i know eu guys that deserted from other uh, eu countries that like it's nothing happens really and so like when you when you have this new French identity, um, if you chose to, if I'm remembering our conversation last time, you could keep this new French identity after your contract. So, yeah, and th- look, yeah, that's another thing. Um, I never really looked into, but yeah, like so technically, you, once you get French citizenship, once you apply for it, you have to apply for it uh, during your fourth or fifth year. You have to have resign. They're not going to, it's like, the Legion is like this, like, oh, they're like, they're not going to, it's not like French citizenship like that. Mm. And the the bureaucracy in the Legion is shit, man. There's guys that won't file your paperwork. They're, it's it's very corrupt. Um, You know, like you have, like, if you want like something done, you might have to buy them a bottle of whiskey or something. Like, it's just that retarded. And like, yeah, it sounds cool, but it's, it's really not because like, if I'm a sergeant in the Legion or, uh, um, a higher ranking for some of them, they'll take care of their paperwork but like you're a corporal like no like fuck you mm. like what do you want like no nah, like i'm not doing it or like it, it will be done but in a lot a lot of more slower pace you know what i mean or like the same nationality like you know i'm american like you know i got a guy working at logistics as american he might hook me up something like that it's so anyways um yeah you can you can i'm pretty sure you can pick your name actually it has to be a french name when you get your french citizenship and your french passport i'm pretty sure you can pick your french name i've known some guys to do it but once again i'm not you'd have to talk to a logistics guy like i never really paid attention to that i'm american like i never really cared for the french nationality but you know these guys who come from poor countries like uh nepal or uh, I don't know, Brazil, you know, guys who they're on their country, you know, work, the salary is not, not so good. Yeah. They want to become French citizens and, and Rus- Russians, like a lot of Russians want that French uh, passport. So like, you know, like I said, you've got a lot of guys who join the Legion that are there just for the passport. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to give hundred percent. They're not going to make you good soldiers. I always say that the best soldiers in the Legion are the Westerners because we're there to be soldiers. Yeah. Okay. I, now that's not everyone. I know good. I know good Ukrainian legionnaires. I know some good Russian legionnaires, like good Nepali. But not, no, like really, 
a lot of other guys, they're just there for a paycheck and they're there for French citizenship. That's it. So they'll do anything. They'll say anything. They'll keep their mouths shut. Like they'll, they'll look away from the corruption. They'll turn the he- their head um, to a lot of things because they want to make the rank. They want to, they want that nationality. It's all about that French nationality. I got to be quiet. Like I want my French nationality. I can't like, you know what I mean? Like I just completely disagree with that. So. Which makes sense. I mean, like if you're, if you're from a poor ass country, like you're not going to say shit about corruption when. And Cause their country's yeah. corrupt, you know, like yeah. they're, they're used to it and they, they thrive in it. And like a lot of the other guys, um, a lot of, they make good corrupt. They, they, they're, they, and it's like the Legion is like a cesspool of corruption, man. Like for Westerners, I, I, I never like, I don't, I, I've always seen corruption like movies and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean, like I came from the state side, like I saw maybe a little bit of corruption in the US military, but like there's checks and balances, man. Like you can't hide stuff like you can in the Legion. You know, um, mm-hmm. you can't get away with things. You know, there's big scandals in the US military, but it gets thrown out. Like once the media gets a hold of it and run with it, like it's big um that being said there are instances yeah where there is things that are hidden in the u.s military but in the legion everything is hidden man like even this the the media the french media doesn't have access to to a lot of these things you know because it's such a small community we're like eight thousand ten thousand soldiers in the legion and not a lot of people are stepping forward with their stories or they don't want to because you know like people are people scared are people scared to do it they're scared to do it. They're definitely scared to do it if they're active, but you know, if they, before they're going to step forward, they're going to desert. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, they're just like, fuck this. Like, I'm not going to go like to the French media or like, whatever. I'm just going to desert. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And that's just a system, man. That's how it is. And yeah. They're, they're not going to put their neck on the line there. for, for, for some for bullshit. Right. Basically. What's that? They're not going to put their neck on the line for some bullshit. They're just going to leave. You're right, man. And I've known some really good guys who deserted, bro. You know, some really good soldiers. It was sad. Really good guys. We know, like, I've, I don't know if you heard this. Like, we say, we say, like, you know, the, the piece of shit stay in and the good guys leave, kind of. Yeah, yeah, ain't that the truth? You know I mean? A lot of shit, man. So, like, I've known some really good soldiers that just got tired of it. Uh, they got fed up with the, their command or what was going on, and they, 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 they just left. You know, they had better opportunity. Yeah. It's the thing, like, Westerners might have better opportunity on the outside. So that's why you might see a lot of Westerners desert more than, like, some of the, the guys who are coming from these poor countries who need the Legion. They need that French nationality that that are just going to keep their mouth shut and continue to do like just, you know, blindside, just look straight ahead and st- things like, or they're worried about their career. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, these guys that are higher ranking, they're worried about making rank. So they're just going to stay quiet. Even though they see things going on, that's not supposed to happen. They're just going to keep their mouth shut because they want to make grade. They, they want to make that rank. So it seems to me like really, I mean, deserting in the French foreign legion is not, it's not really that huge of a deal. It, it sounds like a big deal, but it's not. You have to be a legionnaire, I guess, or understand the system to like, like you know, to really understand. Like in, in America, you know, desertion is a huge deal. Like if you talk to the American, like you know, I'm deserting this military, or like I'm going a wall. We call it a wall, whatever. You know, it's a huge deal, but no. And like you know, during time of war, desertion back in the day was the firing squad. Mm-hmm. You know, like World War One, you deserted was a firing squad man i forgot when they got rid of that uh, maybe it was world war ii i think the last maybe was world war ii but anyways um yeah like you know but now or it, sorry in the legion where it can't be anything nothing can be done not not, not much can be done you're because you're not a citizen of france you're a citizen bro yeah. you're, you're you know you're you're not you have that other passport so yeah now that was one more question I had about the passport. Like, let's say you wanted your French citizenship, you took it. Would you then have to renounce citizenship here in the states? No, 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 not at all. No, because the Fran- France is part of NATO. It's not like uh, you're joining the Russian military or something or Iranian. So you basically, military. have a passport with you know your Jean Luc and That's then your you know Sam Smith. Oh, um, now. That's a good question. Okay, so if I were to get French citizenship, I'd keep my name. Okay. I would not keep my Legion name. But I think these there's some guys like, I know a guy, Belarusian, 
uh, who got French citizenship and he got a French name. So I'm pretty sure he re- had to renounce his Belarusian passport, but uh, they're, they're going to be looking for him. You can't even like the, the way their government set up, it's a dictatorship, you know, Lukashenko. It's like, it's considered like one of the last dictatorships in Europe, if I'm not mistaken, Belarus. But uh, yeah, like you, there's no way, like he's a French citizenship. He he's done like Belarus. Why would he even want to go back to Belarus? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it, so yeah, that's different. But if, for example, if Westerners, like I know some, some Westerners who have their uh, French uh, citizenship and they have their same name, like they have their real name. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. I mean, you're basically just a dual citizen at that point. Yeah, yeah, I have nothing to hide. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I yeah. my name. Yeah. I mean, that's cool about the Legion, the way they do it, though. They do offer you that out, like, hey, you fucked up somewhere else, we'll give you a second chance if you fight for France. Like, you, it know, is, you know, that's the that's actually a really good topic, a really good point. Um, that's what it should be, but now, man, <laughs> it's got so many problems. You know, people aren't there for France, like. Mm-hmm. It's not what it used to be. The Legion has changed a lot, you know, like it's just And you and I were talking offline about that, man, is how how fucked up the Legion's really gotten. And I mean, oh, I don't know how much bad. you want to get into that, but it I mean, it's it's bad. Look, it, I I'll say this much. I've convinced a lot of westerners not to join the Legion, and I feel happy about that because I went through a lot of bad things, man. I saw a lot of bad things in the Legion. I saw like a lot there's, of bad there's, there's there's certainly is hazing. There certainly is this that we all know about. But no, I mean I'm dude, uh, d- dealing drugs, stealing money, uh, like like people like people work in the the, the chow hall stealing food mm-hmm. from like the, stealing food from like from guys like we need to eat and mm-hmm. like the chow hall is terrible. Like the food is terrible. It sounds like prison, bro. It's uh, so the it's like prison rules. It re- it really is. It's not as bad as prison, you know, but like, well, let's put it this way. You only eat two times a day and the huh. Legion, like you don't eat breakfast. There is like, so if you want to go in the morning, it's a piece of bread, man. Like <laughs> six inches by like three inches, bro, with some butter and some honey. Yeah. And like, that's it. Like, there's no eggs. Like, it's not like, it's not like the U.S. military for my U.S. military guys. Like it's, you only, only eat twice a day. And the food is terrible. The food at, at lunchtime is like the best. The food in the evening is terrible. Like it's, huh. I, I, there would be days like I wouldn't eat. Like I, it was just so disgusting. And like I would cook in my room, which you're not allowed to do. Ooh. It's a, There's no, so like in the barracks, there's no kitchens. Like there's no uh, opportunity for you to cook. Unless you're a sergeant or a buck, mm. you get a, a room by yourself. So like it, um, that would, which would be E5 basically. Okay. Once you're a sergeant, you get your own little room with like your own little, it's like a, um, it's like a little kitchen, uh, two, um, electric, uh, plates or whatever you have a little sink, very small room. But, uh, if you when if you're an E4 below, like, uh, under five years, that is as well. Once you have over five years, you can live off base. You can live in an apartment. You know what I mean? But under yeah. five years, you're supposed to live in the barracks. And I know people that have apartments, but if they catch you, you can get in trouble. Um, you can't live um, in the apartment because there's a pell in the morning, which is basically like prison where you all come out and they t- do accountability to make sure no one deserted. So like if you have under five years of service every morning at 6.30, it's, ba- it's basically a system where, okay, is everyone here? Did anyone desert? Like, is anyone um, want to see the infirmary, you know, and, and stuff like that. So it is kind of like prison. It's like prison almost with a cell phone in a way. That's how I always joked about it. It's like prison with a cell phone because you have your cell phone. But huh. yeah, it's just, ugh, I'm glad I'm out. Let's just say that. Like, so you would I, not I, recommend I, it to any Westerners? Yeah. I, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Back to that. I convinced a lot of Westerners um, not to join. And I'm like, and I, a lot of the guys were in the military, the U.S. military. Um, a lot of the guys were ex military. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, dude, do not join. And like, I, I don't like, I don't like the way the U S military is heading. I'm like, bro, like take advantage of those benefits. Cause I was in the U S military and like, bro, I bitched about things when I was in the U S military, like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, like they're not supplying me enough cold weather gear this year, like something, you know, like something retarded, but like, dude, we were, we're taking so, so much care in the U S military. 
dude, any NATO military you go and see how they're ta- like their 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 budget is just ah, uh, it's unbelievable. Like all the NATO militaries, men are under well uh, 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 under equipped and underfunded. Like they're not well funded. Not it's just completely different. Man. Well, what was this shit about? Well, I just read read in a couple of newspapers about how the UK. They basically said, like, if they had to fight for more than a day against this first world country or a, a first rate military, that they wouldn't be able to sustain them. Dude, I I don't know about that, but I do know this. If France was on by itself, if there was no NATO or no EU, and every country is for itself, France would not last a long time. Hmm. Their military for okay. Their military, for, in my opinion, is garbage. Now, I do know some good French soldiers, do know some good French regiments, do know some good French platoons, served with some good guys. It's not all bad, but it, it, there, there's too many generals, man. There's so much bureaucracy. Uh, and the French military, man, you know, there's too many generals in white gloves sipping little mm. these little cups of fucking coffee, bro, like discussing things. It's they're not, we're not, no, we're not ready. Like a peer on peer war will be very bad. It'll be bloody, but I mean, that's going to be everywhere. A peer on peer war. We've, we've been talking about that. I see a lot of pages talking about that now. You know, you're not going to have that air support, air superiority, the peer on peer conflict. You're not going to get that nine line medevac right away. Mm-hmm. You know, like we did in, in the, in the GWAT, the global war on terrorism, you know, where we were fighting guys in flip flops. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. You know, if we fight yeah. peer on peer, it's going to, it's completely different. Well, let's jump into that for a second. I mean, if we had to actually fight against Russia and China, what do you think, man? I mean, what do you think that would look like? Let's put it this way. Uh, you've seen the war uh, going for Russia right now. Their logistics are a, a terrible command, uh, lots of corruption, terrible logistics, unorganized. You know, they're just throwing guys out there, two weeks training, throwing them out there, whatever. Um, I've Dude, the Legion is pretty bad right now. I mean, our equipment is bad. Um, our, our, but I, our everything like is 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 pretty bad in the Legion, or, and I I couldn't even imagine in the Russian military, like mm. how bad it is. Mm. And my grand, I was talking to my grandpa the other day, and he's like, you know, he's an older guy. He he watches a lot of the news, and you know, he just has that mindset, not really thinking outside the box anymore. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh yeah, you know, we, we really need to watch watch out for Russia and China, and I was just like, you know, I'm not worried about Russia. Look at how they're handling Ukraine. I mean, yeah, nuclear missiles is a different story, but that's going to end all of civilization. China, yeah, China is a threat, I believe, but I'm more worried about the U.S. government than anything else. I would, uh, I'm way more scared of our government or the West uh, than China or Russia. I'm sorry, but yeah, China, I, I would agree, like, you know, with this balloon thing, this balloon <laughs> flying over the States, like it, it, it went through NORAD. Yeah. Our, uh, aer- aerial defense um, went through Canada. Like, I don't know, like, I, I, I've been like paying attention to that a little bit. Um, I know we spy on China all the time. I know China spies on us. We've been doing this for a very long time since after World War II. So I couldn't, I'm not well experienced in that department but yeah china i could see china being a threat in the future for sure i've seen what generals been saying like china's a threat you know there'll be a threat and like yeah but what in the future like war what's the war going to be like man like it could be economical yeah um, currency like uh, um, uh what do you call it uh with food or something like that what do you say like agriculturally i don't know our technology like, like a lot attacks. of different terms man like you say it could be cyber it could be agricultural what's, what's the- what's the war in the future, you know, but yeah, China, I can see China being a threat for sure. Um, uh, they're a big country, like, but we're like pushing this agenda, you know, almost where, where we're not making friends. Like China's just kind of fed up with, with us, like, you know, like a lot of countries are fed up with us. Like even in the Legion, like you talk to a lot of guys from different countries, like they're, they're like, Oh yeah, America, like America. It's crazy because like a lot of guys from Eastern Europe, for example, like, oh, America did this, America did that. And I'm just like, yeah, like, you're right, man. Like, I, I know you're preaching to the choir, bro. Like, I'm not, you know, I, I love I love where we come from. I love the idea of America, but it's got lost, bro. Like, America, the idea of America is not what it used to be. 
Well, the thing is, like, America has always been doing this and that, but we've always been able to back it up and say, yeah, we did it. Like, what are you going to do about it, right? But now yeah, it's like we're Exactly. So we're thing. always like, yeah, we did it. What are you going to do about it? America number one, baby. Yeah, but yeah. I just don't – I just don't agree with that anymore. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, now, you know, might is right, but at the same point, if you're mighty, but you're just pathetic, like, the, no one's going to respect that, you know, it's – Right. A lot of – you're uh, losing – a lot of guys are losing respect. I remember I talked to legionaries from Croatia. Uh, he had like 15 years of service. He spoke English. And this was why I was during my basic training, as a matter of fact, when I was base training. And he was talking about, oh, yeah, like he's kind of anti American now. Like, oh, yeah, America did this. And he, he brought up the war, um, uh, Yugoslavia, because he was from Croatia. And he, was, he said this uh, uh, that resonates. I still remember it was like, it was like four years ago, man. He said, He's like, America used to be a big, bright light, but now America, every, everything America touches turns to shit. And dude, like for me, that like really like struck home in a way. I was like, damn, dude, you no, know, like in a way he's right. For, well, a lot I of mean, it has to do with our leadership. I mean, yes, under Trump, of course. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, well, we were doing really well. Yeah. Yeah, so you're now, I mean, look at this, look at this, look at this fucking asshole we got right now. I mean, he's, he's not even mentally there and like, it's just everyone's laughing like it's very sad yeah it's 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 a joke look how the saudi arabians treated um treated yeah. him and look how they treated trump for example yeah. when um biden flew in and like no one takes him uh, seriously uh i don't know how people can really support him and like i'm not uh, i'm not trying to get, be anti-american here but i'm i want people to think outside the box you know like I always, I was hardcore American, you know, like I grew up in the, U I went to the U.S. military, but like a lot of things are not what they, they seem to be. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a, a lot of things like uh, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, like for example, like we, Libya, Syria, you know what I mean? Things well, speaking like that. about, you know, speaking about Africa for a second, I know the Legion, you know, was involved. Well, we're in heavily the, involved in Africa. Africa. And there was some things I'm hearing now that, I mean, it's not going too well for them out there. No, we officially pulled out of Barkane. Uh, we're outside of Mali. Uh, I don't know, like, you know, that's to do, that's a lot of the African countries come in. I mean, we whooped Al-Qaeda's ass in Mali when the war first started, you know. But after a while, we didn't do anything in Mali, man. Like, mm. I had guys going there. Um, even when I, when I was in Mali, bro, like, you know, like, what are we doing here? You know, like, we're, we're just going on, like, these long patrols. Like, we're, we're not actively, like, they, they know we're coming. Um, you know, they see us, they see us miles away. Like, they see the, de the and, and, and the dust, like, this, this big dust trail, ribbon of dust, like these convoys. Uh, our rules of engagement were bullshit. Um, that was a lot of the command, though. You know, like, it's just the politics. A lot of politics have ruined um, things in Mali. And then also African politics, like Malian government, very corrupt there was a coup back in what year was it i want to say 2019 and like yeah and then like russia was like oh we'll provide you this and like you know china has a heavy influence in africa as well um so they're like oh so now they're taking in wagner mm -hmm. um i have a friend who was in mali who uh he, he was in the legion russian deserted the legion because it was just like was there were no missions was just tired of it there's a legion joined wagner and he was in Mali, uh, you know, stacking bodies over there for a little bit. And I haven't heard from him in, in, in like in, in like a year now. I, 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 he might be dead for all I know. But it's not – France, in the end, was kind of like a failure like for us in Afghanistan in a way. You know, um, not as big as a failure. But, uh, yeah, like, you know, France colonized a lot of these a African countries. But, uh, yeah, it just didn't pay off, you know. But yes, anyway, you know, that's it's, how it's it... good that we left. Because you know, they don't want to have it goes, though, when you're a country like this, whether it's America, whether it's France, whether it's England, you go and you colonize a bunch of places. And then all of a sudden you like grow this like conscience and you like decide, oh, we, we can't be like, you know, might is right anymore. And it um it really fucks your country up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, um, dude, like there's so much uh, Afri in Africa. All their countries are corrupt, you know, like. Power corrupts. I don't know. Sometimes um, colonization was probably better for a lot of these countries. Yeah, we did do some fucked up things over there when we colonized. But uh, 
we did some great things the West did. And um, look at any African-run country now. It's not going very well. And it's to do with the corruption, you know, where like you can't, these guys don't want democracy. It doesn't work. This idea of democracy, like how it was in the West, there's not a unification, man. There's all these clans. You have all these different ethnic groups that you don't have in like the States, you know, we're all American kind of type thing. But like, in, 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 like even in Afghanistan, or, or like Iraq, man, like democracy just does not work over there. It's just not possible. You know what I mean? Like, no, maybe, no, not at all. Not at all. It, it's, yeah. And, you know, I mean, you could say what you want about colonization or whatever. I've gotten called a colonizer several times now just because I'm a white dude. But, you know, I mean, is it really such a bad thing? I mean, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll OK, let's put it this way. When the Spanish uh, went into Mexico, for example, and the Aztecs were sacrificing but human sacrifices, you're cutting people's hearts out, giving them to the gods. Spanish went in there and, and banned it. Like, okay, no, like, you know, they Catholicism, Christianity, like, okay, like, no, no more human sacrifices. Like, there's this famous Spanish uh, soup. I forgot pozole or something that was back in the day was, was with human flesh. Like, the Spanish outlawed that and they, they made it with pork. You know what I mean? It's so like, oh, what, like, how, how, how bad, like, did we colonize? Yes. You know, like, we brought over diseases, you know, that they didn't know about. We killed millions. I mean, is that our fault? And like, is that's an accident? You know, we're trying to kill millions of like guys with disease. Yes, we brought over disease. Like, we, that's just how it was. People wouldn't have immunities back then like we do now. Um, uh, we, we, we built lots of good things. We, we brought Christianity to, uh, to them. Uh, I mean, without without colonization, they'd still be savages in a way. Yeah, Am I right? they would, 100%. And, I mean, I human mean, sa sacrificing humans, yeah. like, I mean. It was the best thing that ever happened to them. I mean, flat yeah. out. Yeah. So, and people want to, oh, you know, like human sacrifices and, 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 and the biblical realm as well. And, okay, in the Old Testament, yes. But it was different once Jesus died for our sins. Like there was not human sacrifice. Well, just to be clear here, in the Old Testament, there was not human sacrifices by the Hebrews. That was animal sacrifices. And, and, and they, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that. You're no, correct. but you're you were correct because the Babylonians and the um, the Philistines, I think, you know, there, there were human sacrifices there with with Moloch and all these things. But the Hebrews yeah. came in and same deal. They were like, no, 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 no. You're not doing that anymore. Like we're gonna follow the one true God here. Like this is. Yes, okay. yeah, was animal yeah. sacrifices, which was the firstborn, which right. was like the firstborn, first animal, first animal, like you sacrifice, you give to me. And that was in the Old Testament, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, you could draw a lot of comparisons here to, you know, ancient Israel coming in and saying, okay, wait, here's like some civilized rules here, Ten Commandments, Seven Noahide Laws, and, you know, even Western civilization, who the offspring of Judaism is Christianity, Yes, and we freaking civilized a lot of people and said, no, no, you're not going to cut out your fellow man's heart. Like, it's not allowed anymore. Like, and that's not to say there's a lot of evil. And, and, and like, even in Christianity, there's a lot of evil people, man. Yeah. Like, people say that they're Christians that are doing these evil things like the Catholic Church, yeah. which I disagree with completely. The Pope, the Pope is is a lefty man. Like, dude, the, if you hear anything he says, dude, he's he, that, that's there super liberal man does not for me i disagree with what he says like christianity is not like that if you're gonna follow true christianity you know like you respect everyone you're peaceful to everyone you know sometimes you have to go to war to make peace but that's how it is you know like these child molesters yes okay you know like people want to bring that up like oh the church the catholic church like that's not christianity bro there's some evil people in this world and Dude, like, give them to me. I, I, yeah. I, I won't say what I'm going to do to child molester here online, but you know, I'm, you know, what I'm saying like. Well, a lot of the time, God uses His warriors for retribution. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just the way that it always has been. God loves a soldier, so. Yeah, but I will agree. There's a lot of evil things that happened during colonization, but that's not Christianity. Unfortunately, I was like, oh, these Christians are doing it. Yes, but man that's evil evil is evil and god disagreed with it and those these guys who colonized and you know like were were evil to these indigenous tribes or whatever who are all dead now it was a long time ago i'm sure they're not in heaven 
Yeah, you know, and, you know you look at, we, people bring up the not, they're judging people, for sure, right? Where the you know, Templars are going in and slaughtering villages of Jews and Sadisans and all these different people, but they weren't. That wasn't. Christ would have certainly not approved of that in any of way. Course not. Evil, of course and, not. you know, and unfortunately, like, that's it's it it gave Christianity in many parts of the world a bad name. It did, even like even in America when when we were you know attacking the uh, Native Americans and stuff like that, which I completely disagree with. You know, like that was wrong, man. Like that was that's it's right. It's their land. You know, we, we should have brought Christianity to them. Okay, that's fine. The Bible says that spread out, spread Christianity throughout, you know, for everyone throughout the nations and all that. Okay. But, you know, like taking over their land, like we, we did some evil things. We really did, you know, looking back at it. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, you could say like, that was really bad, but at the same point, you look around civilization. Now we have beautiful cities built and, you know, we're the most powerful nation in the world still to, for now, at least. And That's it's how like, colonization is, man. Like, yeah, it is I mean, it is, you know? like it I, is, it is. I'm not going to harp on it all day, but yeah, like that's, yeah, it is what it is. Um, we do have some beautiful things. Uh, we, <laughs> I mean, look at, uh, look at Africa. That's all I have to say. Yeah, it's, Without, like, look most, at, I, Enough, enough said frankly i mean yeah like just look at africa you know yeah like it's a prime example i mean and people are gonna go crazy like these people oh, listening yeah. to that but it's true the truth hurts man truth yeah it's truth is you know it's like uh musashi said the truth is what it is and you will either bend to its 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 will or or you know live a lie and, yeah, and that's yeah, the rest of it. It. yeah so yeah. all right so like Life after the Legion, man. Are you enjoying it or? Uh, it's been a few months and yeah, like I, it's all about routine for me. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Like not uh, going to appell, like, you know, waking up, um, not having like, you know, some, some, ugh, this, these leaderless spineless dudes like commanding you or just like, I have a clue what's going on. Like I was so tired of the, it was getting bad uh, for my mental health, man. Yeah. I was just so yeah. tired of it. And, it, you know, like, it's really a lot to do with the leadership. Leadership just so bad, at least where I was. Now, it's not everywhere like this, but um, it doesn't change. Like, there's, like, if you're a bad leader, there's, like, they, there's no, no one's going to take their place. Like, not in the U.S. military. Like, it gets hidden. Like, no one speaks out. So, like, you know. I've known some bad leaders to get kicked out of their position in the, in the U S military and different uh, uh, positions and different like uh, levels of uh, command and, and platoons and stuff like that. But in the Legion, man, like it's just not happened. And I got so, so tired of it. And, and like, it was just got, it got so bad where you would literally like wake up, you would go to work and you would just talk about it all day. Like you would be like, Oh man, fuck the Legion. Like people it really like, it was like that all the time. Like, this guy's a piece of shit. Like, you know what I mean? I'm tired of this shit. Like this happened to me like a few months ago. And it was just like a, all the day. He's got really toxic and it's just so I, negative. I know for my time, you know, doing one shepherd and the small unit tactics and stuff, if you got like a bad PL who really just doesn't know what he's doing. It fucks the morale like so quick. Yeah. But yes, but he, they can, they'll get kicked out usually. And like the U S military, like if you're a bad PL man, you do not last long. But right. there, there's like the captain protects the PL over there. Right, right. Like he's not come up reporting to the colonel like, oh, this guy's bad because if the if the the pl pl platoon leader's bad, then it reflects it on the captain. And so like these captains are reporting. It's just such bullshit. But anyways, back to getting out of the legion. Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy living with my wife man. like. I'm, I'm happily married. Um, my wife is everything. Find yourself a, a good woman, guys. Um, she's, that's like, will be, a, a, well, I will make you or break you in life. And uh, thank God that I have, I'm very, I'm blessed with a very good woman and she's a Christian as well. And, and you guys uh, so, yeah, are recently I'm, married. So congratulations to both of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, just to circle back around, I know you and I talk about this privately sometimes, is what's going on with dudes in the U.S. right now, or even Western Europe in general? Like, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of bitch-made mother flowers out there right now. What's going on? <laughs> oh, man, like, where do we start? 
you know, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a lot to do with indoctrination, like um, our schools and like, especially the universities now, uh, these professors, like I went to college after the US military, uh, I was 25. And I, I just did a year, I did not like college. Just, and like, uh, I'd studied the wrong major. I was studying exercise science, which is cool, like hobby. I should have chose something better, whatever, didn't work out. But um, yeah, like I had some super left uh, 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 professors, man, that were in doc. They felt like they, they're saying like they were like, God, and doctoring these 18 year olds, I would disagree with them all the time. You know, but I was the only one. And as I was 25, a lot of my classes, I was with 18, 19 year olds, you know, young guys, like they just didn't speak up or like whatever. I would. You know, like uh, it was during Obama was still, yeah, Obama was still president. And, but anyways, like, I think a lot of it has to do with indoctrination. Um, uh, we're, we're losing these traditional values. Like these uh, people are growing up a lot without their dads. Mm -hmm. um, you need a father. I grew up without a dad, man. My dad died when I was five and my mom never remarried. And growing up without a dad, let me tell you, it's tough, bro. Like you need, if you're, especially as, as a boy, you need a father figure in your life. I cannot tell you how pertinent that is for you to grow up as, as successful or like as a man, like as a man should, you know, tough um, uh, morals, how to respect women. Like you really, a boy, a boy needs his father really. Man. That's really important. And we're not having these traditional values anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, that's to do with it. Godless society. Um, you know, the, 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 the family, family is out. There's, you know, women have to work now before it was stay at home. Mom, the dad brought in the, the provided, you know, it's all changed. And like, it's all about empowering women, you know, women have to work too. And like, and like, you know, these kids, like, I'm not having kids. And like, who's going to take care of you when you're old, man? Yeah. Like having yeah. a child, you know what I mean? Like, so that's, that's a lot of things. I, I think, you know, um, we're just getting into a big pussified, uh, society you know but this is what they want yeah like it's, oh it's okay to you know have feelings like it's okay to be weak you know like all these pacifists and, yeah yeah and be, uh, yeah well, it's be, okay be, to have feelings it's okay to cry you know real uh, men cry yeah i cry I've cried yeah. before but yeah. no you still gotta be strong man you still gotta you, you have you have to be as a man you know you have a lot of eyes on you especially when you have children you have to be a leader bro and we don't have, we're losing this leadership. We're, we're, we're losing these leaders, man. Even like manly figures, you know, like if, if you're like us now, you're, you're evil, like a white Christian male, you know, like where, where are the colonizers, you know, like we're ruining society, but no, we're not, man. Like we, we haven't been like, look at all, like look, I, all the World War II veterans, which slowly are going away. You know, we, sooner or later, we're not going to have any World War II and then it will be a Vietnam and so on. But like, these guys, man, all these World War II vets, like, what did they have to go through, like, when they were uh, men? You know, we're just, technology's ruining it as well. I want to say it's it's a mess. Yeah, people are sitting in front of their computers all day. They're not getting enough testosterone flowing through them. They're not eating. Yeah, our food. testosterone's going down. Yeah. Like, it, I forgot the studies, man. But, I mean, I've been reading about it. Um, testosterone, like, we're losing testosterone. Like, it's like a 50%. Yeah, and that's like, because the food we eat, yeah. uh, we're not working out. Uh, JFK was like huge, for example, in the fitness. When is the last time a president has talked about fitness, my man? Yeah, when is true. the last that's time true. any dude for me? And so like in the Legion, if you weren't fit, no one respected you because like, who are you? It's kind of like the prison. It's kind of like hierarchy. I mean, if, if I'm in a position of power and I'm some like this weak, skinny guy, like giving orders, like, I better be fucking smart in other ways because, like, people aren't going to respect you, bro. Like, oh, this guy can't run, you know, like, this guy can't do push-ups. Like, how the fuck am I? But that's how I look at it here. You got these weak guys in office, bro, these fat pieces of shit, like, telling me how to live. Like, bro, go fuck, go to the fucking gym, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but in order to be a leader, for me, you must be physically fit. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, and you don't have to be the strongest guy, bro. You don't have to lift. You don't have to bench press 315, man, but Dude, stay physically fit, bro. We don't have any any leaders harping on physical fitness, man. No, I mean you're sure you're right. Like, look at our leaders right now. Like, literally, none of them are strong at all. Physically strong at all. Like, no one's. If I was president, I'd be like, we need to stay fit. You know, as a society, we 
you know, we need to eat healthy. No well, one talks about like nutrition. I was in high school, bro. I'm, I'm old enough now. I'm like a dinosaur to remember the presidential fitness cha- challenge. Right? Yeah, I remember that as well. Yeah, yeah. And, we had- and that went by the wayside. That's all out the door. Uh, it's uh, Now we're just becoming very docile. Yes. Uh, you know, and yeah, testosterone is dropping. You know, our food is shit. Yeah. Um, Do you, you think, know, the, I, did you see the difference between food in the U.S. and food in France at all? Okay, good. Good question, man. So let me put it this way. I was in the Legion. I see the genetics of Easterners, Easterners compared to Westerners, bro. Yeah. It's literally that simple, bro. Like, I don't have good genetics. Like, I, I, I have to work uh, a lot to get results, okay? Dude, the Easterners, man, bro, these guys are, dude, they don't even have to work out. They're ripped. Bro. Yeah. And, like, I want to blame it on their diet. And I want to blame it on, like, they don't have that processed bullshit food that the west eats like they don't have they don't eat mcdonald's man like my ukrainian friends they told me like you you, mcdonald's is like like what businessmen went to like it was expensive in ukraine you know like you don't you don't eat mcdonald's unless you had money you know what i mean like so a lot of these eastern not just eastern europeans a lot lot of asian guys too but had way better genetics dude than western man way better genetics like they were just like they took your shirt off, like way more fit. Like they didn't have to work out, bro. They were just they were just ripped. It's well, they're crazy. sitting there eating anabolic food, you know, meats, rice, like they're eating bread. more natural food. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like our genetics are shit in the West, man. Like it's if you go to any other country, our genetics are not that good. Like American genetics are terrible now. You know, it's all that processed eat. food, man. Way more processed food, and and in Europe, um, there's a lot of banned food and ban preservatives and dyes that they don't put in the food that the FDI just approves. And that's because the FDA is lobbying, you know, like l- lobbying all the, or like these food companies are lobbying, like saying like, this is okay. Like, you know, putting these uh, officials in power, just lobbying, like, you know what I mean? So yeah, the food quality is better in France. However, in the Legion, it's not because we have a very shit budget. So mm. when they went to buy food, it was like bottom of the barrel, like the mm. least, a lot of canned food, but still, um, you know, you're not going to get a lot of preservatives and stuff like you would in the States, for sure. The food so it's not is like you're sitting better. there eating fancy French meals in the Legion. No, yes. not, not at all. Yeah. Like, I, I eat a lot better in the U.S. military. Um, but as far as the EU goes, there's a lot of banned preservative, preservatives and substances and dyes and what have you. That's you know, I, you know what I noticed over there, and in, in specifically in France, but Italy as well, I could eat pasta and bread over there, like, and not gain any weight and not feel bloated or whatever. But over here, if I eat the bread, I get fucking bloated. I start gaining weight. Like, yeah, it's just the way they process their bread. Man. Yeah. You know, it's different. So, yeah, yeah. Like in France or in the EU, like, yes, their diet, and there's not, there's not a lot of fat people in France, not like the US. Yeah. But they don't eat as much. Like, or in Europe, you know, the portions are a lot smaller. At mm-hmm. least in the EU, like Western European countries, you know, when I would visited Poland, man, they had big portions, hearty portions. The food was really good, for example. Um, they ate a lot, but like it just in general, you know, like they don't eat a lot of processed foods, I'd say, like we do. The younger generation, yeah, it does like, but I mean, no, it's 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 a little bit different. It's set up a, a bit differently in, in the in the EU. And like, you know, like in a lot of uh, small villages. In, the, in, the, in Europe, you know, you still have a butcher shop. Like, when's the last time you've seen a butcher shop in the States? Yeah, that's true. You know, like, they have, like, uh, these uh, farmer markets and, like, local produce. And a lot of Europeans, Western and Eastern, have gardens. Because, uh, and Eastern European more so because they're poor, man. They have to have gardens. And, like, we used to have that, too. But, like, in the 50s, and, 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 you know, everything was like, oh, microwavable food, like, oh, like, you know, like um, I, the consumerism capitalism just like blew up. It was, you know, like, um, I forgot what you would call it, but, um, you know, like they were trying to market things um, way more or what, whatever, and like more convenient, everything had to be more convenient. And, you know, we got rid of certain things. And, um, you know, so I noticed that too, is in France, like, dude, they go and they shop for like for that day. Like, yeah 
buy their food for that day. And then the next day they'll go back to the grocery store again, or like every two days, like whereas yeah. here you are I mean, shopping for like the week or the, or I would do that. I would yeah. I buy it like a few days in France, but yeah, here we buy it for like a week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, it's more or less like you have guys sometimes buy it for a week, but yeah, like a lot of people would buy it like from day to day or go to the butcher, get fresh meat, get fresh meat, you know I mean? fresh meat really Something makes like that. Difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's different. It is definitely different in, in Europe for sure. And like a lot of these guys, like I said, have gardens, man, like fresh vegetables. Yeah. And I really think that that's so key. Get the, the micronutrients, right? Like a lot of people in the U S don't even fucking eat vegetables at all, but even when we do, they're like genetically modified or whatever. And you're not getting that same look at the welfare. Like if you're on welfare, like what kind of food these guys are getting, you know, like it's yeah. all processed. Yeah. Um, our, our, the, the pyramid, the food pyramid is a joke, man. It's, uh, it's yeah. not government. Like they're regular, like what they say it should be is not what it should be. Like stay away from fats. No fats are healthy. Yeah. Like you need to stay away from carbs. If you want to get like, you, if you're trying to like lose weight, you need to stay away from carbs, not fat, man. Like Bro, fats, I'm, I'm, so I'm cutting for like down the line in the MMA, MMA fight right now, but I'm I starting to cut, right? Um, yeah, I, I went on a higher fat, lower carb diet, bro, three days, three yeah. days, I lost four pounds. Yeah. Like it's, different. Yeah. It, it's ridiculous that they think, oh, wake up and eat cereal. Like that's a terrible fucking idea. Like, what are you talking about? Cereal all processed, all preserved, like sunflower, um, uh, sun, oils, sunflower yeah. oils, which is like a huge, uh, that de detrimental to your testosterone for a man and Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's terrible, man. No, the way that the way that we're told to eat over here is fucking. And if horrible. you want to eat organic, it's more expensive. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. People want to eat organic because look at the inflation right now, man. No, you like, can't even afford eggs. like not organic eggs, let alone sure. freaking pasture raised organic shit. You got to be organic eggs are ten bucks, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you know, like we we have uh, we have ducks here at uh, at our house, and we use duck eggs, which helps out. I encourage everyone, if you can, become self-sustainable now because, like, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Like, in this day and age, and, like, get chickens, you know, have a little garden, become a little self-sustainable, man, because, like, canned food is great. Canning food is, is a great uh, – um, what would you say? Is, is, is a great way to preserve food for the winter. And, like, a lot of Eastern Europeans, like, I, my Ukrainian friends, like, talk about canning food because – you know, like they're poor over there, man. They have to can food for the winter. Yeah, they got uh, no choice. And that's what we had to do too, once again, a long time ago. But we don't. Everything's convenient. Like, I just don't need that. I can just go by the store and buy some Twinkies or something. Like, that will fill me yeah. up. You know, it's yeah. totally different mentality. It's it's interesting. Do you ever miss the European way of life now that you're stateside? So, yeah. Like, the infrastructure is better. America's infrastructure is shit, bro. Like the traffic is terrible, man. Like car, everyone, you have to have a car here. Yeah. Like in Europe, you can take the train. Like some Europeans will go through their entire lives without owning a car. You could take the train from town to town to town, right? Not every town, not every village has a train. Okay. Every major city has a train. Like you can get to any, like I could get from France to Poland on trains if I wanted to, or bus or the bus. You know what I mean? I took, actually, I was curious. Like I saw this. I flew from France into Poland, but on the way back, I took a bus. Like, I was just curious. It was a 24-hour bus. I left from Poland back into France from bus, like to Paris, from Krakow to Paris. And, I mean, I wouldn't do it again. It kind of sucked. You know, I was tired and all that. But I was just curious to see. Like, oh, this is cool. You know what I mean? But, yeah, like, even in the cities, like, people were walking. You have sidewalks everywhere. Like, if you walk on the streets in the States – like who's that drug dealer? Who's this guy? You know, like why is this guy walking? And there's no sidewalks. Yeah. Like our 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 infrastructure, like our, our the way we have houses everywhere. Like it's not like that in France and, and and like Europe. Like villages are are these little villages, and like outside there's nothing. You might be like a few farmers' houses, you know, or a few farmers who have these fields and houses on the outside, but like. They're all the villages, like that's where everyone lives in like the village. Here it's just spread out. There's houses everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I miss I do like the infrastructure. Um Europe's a lot greener, environmentally friendly. Um 
They take care of the environment a lot more. But one of the things I love about America is the Second Amendment, man. Fuck yeah. Like, owning gun is everything for me. Uh, it, it's like part of being American is owning guns. And like Europe, you can own guns in Europe, but it's way more difficult. Um, and like, I, you know, it's just complete disagree with that. Um, look at, uh, I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> look at what the European government's going to be like. It's getting bad over there too. It's not just America. It's the Western Europe as well. And like there's the, the French government or like the European, like the EU has one step above their citizens because they're not armed. The EU, Switzerland, I know is armed. I think the Norwegian countries, don't quote me on this. Like, I think they can own, like, it's a little easy for them to get firearms. Like, the EU is very strict, man. And there's still crime, like, in Marseille, man, huge crime capital. Mm -hmm. It's usually gang on gang violence, um, which is all the North Africans, like the, the yeah. It's yeah. Long, uh, Arabs yeah. who are causing all the crime in Europe. It's not the French, you know, it's, 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 but like, they're, there's so many guns and they get it from the Baltic or sorry, from the Balkans, man. Like a lot of these guys are gun running from the Balkans, the uh, Chechens. Um, mm -hmm. They're getting their, their weapons from there. So like, it's still, it's illegal, but they're still using them. They're still killing people over there. So a well armed society is, is, is good in my opinion. So like, yeah, I like uh, going back home and being able to dry fire and just yeah. owning a gun. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, it's amazing. You know, speaking about, I like about, about that, like, I come from the tri-state, East Coast, right? Yeah. Like New Jersey. Bro, like, no one's got guns out there. Like, you might have it at your house, but, like, you can't carry it or nothing like that. Then I moved out west, dude. Everyone's got a gun. People don't uh, honk at each other. It's old school. People don't fucking honk at each other, like, in traffic. That doesn't usually ever happen. Like, people are very polite to each other. Like, yes, like, gun violence happens. It's, again, it's mostly, like, gang on it's gang mostly the criminals it's uh, the bad guys like people don't get fucked with out here they don't really get robbed because literally anyone can just put a gun in their purse or in their pocket and roll around like so everyone knows that an armed society the, the, is a place. the good guys aren't creating a crime man yeah. like i carry a gun every day i don't rob anyone i don't hurt anyone yeah, exactly <laughs> it's not the gun that's is hurting people it's the person and we have a huge mental health problem here man that people yeah. won't address we like the 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 left wants to blame it on guns and it's not the gun man you know it's these criminals it's it's yeah. and like do you can go down the rabbit hole on that and like talk about these cultural mm -hmm. like it's it, it's it, it, it has to do with the culture and the, the mental health and all that but you got these video games kids are playing the shoot them up the music you know? music man music the That's rap music, music is is terrible even look at when we were coming up in the 90s, man, like, okay, music, like, there was some gangster rap and shit, but it was, like, it was a lot of Abby It was real, shit, it was you know? real like, life struggle, the day yeah. day struggle, man. Now, dude, Imagine I go to the clubs and stuff, space. and it's all about, you know, smack a bitch and, like, yeah, this I, and that. Yeah, it's, it's strapped, stay strapped, like, yeah. kill someone. Like, dude, you don't kill – you haven't even killed anyone, man. You're fake. You're like, you're not even a real – you're not really – you guys man. haven't even fucking held a gat. Like, come on, get out of here, like – yeah, it's yep. terrible, man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah uh, that's but yeah, I love I love owning my firearms in the states. That's one thing that uh, it's hard to do in France and 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 in the EU, any EU country, you know, it's it's very hard. Like, um, it's mainly hunters, like you know, in the countryside, but it's just like a sh over under shotgun mm -hmm. or a deer rifle, you know, bolt action, thirty odd six or something that, and that's about it. They want to make sure yeah, that their people can't revolt, really, is what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, good luck in, in, in France and, 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 I mean, and in Europe, you know, when, when things go bad, that's for sure. So, yeah, like, that's right, one so thing. Steph, that... do, you, do, you, do you have any advice? I mean, for, like, obviously, your advice for a lot of Westerners at this point would be don't join the Legion. But let's yeah. just some no, way. Yeah. I would say this. Um, if you're in the U.S. military, stay there. Okay. Like, unless you really want, unless like you want French citizenship for some reason, I like if, or if you have nothing going on in the States, like, let's say um, you got kicked out of the U.S. military or like, you know, you're on the streets or something like you have just nothing going on. Join the Legion it might help you out. But if you're doing good in the U.S. military, you have a good job in the States. Do not join the Legion, man. Like, your whole the whole quality of life just goes down, man. It's not the adventure 
what it used to like in these books that you've read. Um, it's just not what it used to be. I, I just, I, I would say don't like stay in the U S military, man. It has great benefits. Like the Legion is not this big fighting, great fighting force. that used to be. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not, so it's basically, you're saying it's not like Jean-Claude Van Damme going over to fight in uh, wherever he was in Africa. Yeah. It's not the same, man. It's the same. Not the same. No. I got a couple of comments here that actually I, I never asked you from the first video we did. So Go I might ahead. have, you know, before they, yeah, before, uh, before we close out here. So like, uh, Peter Venable says, I'm headed to Ogborn on Friday in hope of fulfilling my dream of becoming a legionnaire. I have been training and learning French for four months, and this was a great podcast. Makes a lot of sense. Actually, that Sorry, that wasn't a question at all, but he liked your podcast. Um, yeah, that's cool. I mean, he sounds really motivated. Good luck. Uh, and, you know, how much – how, how important is it to learn French before you before you go? Look, man, I tried uh, learning French <laughs> uh, with the app. But, man, when I went into the Legion, I knew, like, bonjour and merci. Like, I knew, <laughs> hello, thank you. Like, good day and thank you. Like, you'll learn it, man. Um, and, and the Legion, um, they're very big on speaking to you in French. So like you learn, it took me like a year, uh, for other guys, it, they learned it a lot quicker. Um, it depends on how much you study, you need to study, but, um, like you can go into the Legion, not speaking any French. Okay. It would give you a leg up, but it's not necessary. It will definitely help you because you can defend yourself, man. Yeah. Like, you're in basic training, you can't speak any French. Like some fucking sergeant or corporal is like blaming you, or some like French speaker is you know trying to shit on you or something, and you can't defend yourself. You're gonna you're the one who's gonna take the blame. So like learning French is really gonna help you defend yourself in mm. a lot of circumstances, and like it's gonna help you listen and like listen go th listen through the bullshit like these guys like trying to fuck you over or, like haze you like you're gonna know what's trying to you you're gonna understand what's going on. Like that's one of the real main benefits. Like so do you, you're you're fluent in French now, I'd assume. Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, there's, yeah, after five years, yeah, I'm pretty good in it. Like, there's always room for improvement, you know. But I mean, yeah, I can I can go anywhere and speak French. Like, man, I've had dreams in French. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. Once you start dreaming into the the other language, that you know you're you know you're pretty much there. Yeah. Uh, so Jonathan says, hi, I was curious if, uh, it's difficult getting into a canine role within the Legion as in a lot of people compete, are there a lot of people competing for those roles? Um, and that was wow. the first part of his question. So. Um, dude, I, we don't have a uh, canine and, 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 and a Legion, like that's all French military who do that. Okay. We have no, like the. So, like, for, like, example, MPs, like, Legion, military police, it's nothing like the U.S. military. Um, no, no, we don't have any canine roles. Uh, maybe if now, if you're working with SF and you're in, a, in, a, in, a, in like, a, a more elite unit, uh, like the GC, uh, GCP and the GCM, which is, like, the mountain commandos or the parachutist commandos, you might work with canine units, but you're not. There's no canine positions in the Legion. Oh, that's good to know. And then, so his second part of the question was, uh, does not being allowed to have a car mean you're not allowed to own one, drive one, or even be a passenger in a friend's car? Oh, no. So let me, so before it used to be um, under five years, you can't have a car. But when I was in, like two years in, they changed it to where you had to be, you could be a corporal, you had to be the rank of a corporal. And with three years of service to own a car. So like, um, yeah, you can own a car. You can actually, you can get a car whenever you want, but it's illegal. And like they're at, like the MPs are literally actively looking for people who have cars like under the, and like they always get in trouble with, I know I've had friends get in trouble having a car, mm -hmm. but what's going to happen? You're going to get 20 days of jail. Like you're going to get your pee pee smack. There's no serious repercussions. You'll get 20 days of jail and like Legion jail is a joke. You're just doing yard work all day. You're like, you're cleaning and stuff like that. Um, there's no UCMJ, like the US military. There's no like paper trail, man. Like, 
can't you literally it's virtually impossible to get kicked out of a legion like you can like you'd have to murder someone to be kicked out of a legion so like yes you can own a car with three years of service with a rank of corporal um or if you don't make corporal like if like dude if you don't make corporal within five years you're a serious fuck up but i know some people who don't make corporal within five years and then yeah after five years you can get a car you can still get a car without the rank of corporal and under three years but if you get caught you're gonna go to legion jail which is legion jail is on the regiment like you wear an orange vest um you're gonna do some bullshit you know what i mean like cleaning but like it's chill like jail like it's not what you think you know you still go into the, the towel hall um it's 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 very chill like it's not well i mean you're still gonna like do you're gonna be cleaning all day you know what i mean but like no one's gonna be hitting you like it's not like mm -hmm. no one's trying to rape you in jail man like none of that shit's gonna happen you know what i mean so um yeah like you can that's a, that's the stipulations for owning a car um so jordan mccarthy was wondering he says hi i'm ex-military for six years i broke my leg after discharge Wondering if that would stop me from joining. He says it's all fixed and functional now. Okay, so like, um, when you uh, go through the the process um, in processing, um, if they see a scar anywhere on you, like a big scar, they're gonna make you go get an X ray on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they'll ask you, "Oh, have you had any broken bones?" You can lie. Because it's all about lying, bro. Like, really, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not just serious. Indian Legion is all about lying, bro. You don't have to be honest. They're like, oh, like we can look you up. Like, no, bro. They can't go into your DOD records. Mm. Those are officially sealed federal man. They can only do the only thing the Legion can do is see if you're wanted on Interpol. That's all they can do. Okay. Okay. So unless you're internationally wanted, they're not going to know, man. And they um, want you too. Like they need guys. So like oh, they're, dude, they're hurting for guys so bad right now. You know, there's deserters every week. Um, and, and it's just getting gotten such a mess. But yeah, anyways, um, if you have a scar, if it's a scar, they're gonna they're gonna ask you what is it, and they're gonna make you go get an X-ray. And so yeah, and they might not take you. Um, they've dropped the standards like <laughs> in like the, the past few years. So I don't know, maybe now, but they will definitely make you go get an X-ray and they'll see that broken bone. Mm -hmm. um if you have a scar but if you broke your leg and there's no scar for example just don't say like you've had no, anything not. broken you'll be fine and so that's that's james uh goodwin asks you still need to do seven pull-ups just to get in dude, they've dropped they, <laughs> dude I, dude it, so like bro when i came in um it was like 15 then it got to seven then it was four now it's like no pull-ups bro it's no pull-ups to get in it's just crazy man yeah that's the u.s the iq I test as well it, really? dude it's just nuts it's nuts like they're hurting for people man After, dude coronavirus really fucked up everything now the war mm -hmm. in ukraine you got a lot of people going to fight in ukraine um, but no dude like the standards have dropped tremendously like i have i have a friend who works in the in processing you know new guy they dropped a lot of standards like oh, oh. The, these guys will get fit in basic training they, yeah, like right, these right. Get, that's their excuse which so i mean i mean it is true like you know i mean you you and will dude, get it's, it. it's bull it's a bullshit mentality but yeah like yes you will get some level of strength but you want to go in there strong you know what i mean yeah make your life a whole lot easier if you're not like sucking. oh my oh dude yeah, yeah yeah for sure so um True patriotism and contradiction asks hi my height is 173 centimeters can i join the ffl Yes. Uh, written test mandatory to clear any standards for clearing a written test. Um, what? You had a basic IQ test that was written. It was very straightforward. And then the, the real IQ test is on computer. And then your questionnaire, like your psychological questionnaire was on computer. Um, and then they'll ask you questions, which they write down. So like the only thing written that I remember doing was the basic IQ test was written like, I think it was multiple choice as well. Damn, it's such a long time ago. I don't remember. But no, there's nothing really written. You're just going to be signing a lot of paperwork. Um, but yeah, 173 centimeters is fine, man. Like, I don't know. I don't even know if they have. I'm, I'm sure under five foot or something, like, they don't let you in. Right. Which I don't remember centimeters. What's like a meter is 39 
inches. So like, just do the math, but like, yeah, like I know some really short guys in the Legion, bro. Like I know some really short guys in the Legion. Yeah, 173 centimeters is fine. Well, I mean, you know, one thing I've learned is don't fuck with a short dude too much. Cause those guys. Are yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so last question here um, comes from Samuel F. Uh, he said, I'd like and subscribe. All I ask is, could you please ask Sam what a pension will look like after 20 years of service, and is it something you can live on, or would you need another job? Thanks in advance. Man, good question. That's why I yeah, – I, so, like, funny enough, I didn't – there is – you can retire at 20 years, but now – they're doing something with the pensions like the French is like taking away out of that because of the crisis in the economy and all that. It's not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, depending on your rank has a lot to do with it, but dude, it's going to be like max $2,000 a month, man. Like it's not like the U S military. Um, can you live off $2,000 a month? You probably could. It's not comfortable. Let's put it that way. Um, unless you're an officer, the Legion isn't really going to offer you a lot of good pension opportunities, but yeah, you can retire over 20 years. Um, dude, that's another question you would have to ask. Like, like these guys who've been in for a long time, I never paid it. I never followed up on that. Um, because I knew I wasn't going to be in for 20 years. Um, so, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't have any more information on that. Uh, but I know it's not that good. Let's put it that way. It's not that good. You probably, could live off it, but definitely not comfortably. I'm glad we got. I'm glad we got you on, man, to to come back and and let us know how you're doing. I mean, it's it's fascinating because you always hear about, you know, life in the foreign legion, this and that, but rarely do we catch up with somebody after they've come home and say like, hey, how how's it how's it going for you now? Like, it's fascinating to hear that you talk about how yeah, it was it was great, but here I am now, married man you know, job, all of these things. And I'm, I'm moving on from, you know, from my time in the Legion, but taking the lessons I've had and very, you sound like you're very grateful for everything that you've, you've learned and went through there, but you're, you're moving forward. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, it's, it's been a roller coaster, man, for sure. Being in the Legion. Um, I don't regret it at all. So, uh, I mean, you know, you can't dwell on the past. You got to move forward. I mean, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I learned a second language, um, made a lot of good guys. Um, the good, the, the bad outweighs the good over there, at least for me. Yeah. At least for me, it was, I'm glad I'm out. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, this is, it's life. It's a journey. <laughs> what can I say, man? But thank you for having me, dude. Dude, yeah, really our, our pleasure, pleasure again, man. And you know, we're, we're getting started with the tactical podcast again. So, any of you guys who have um, questions, hey, throw them in the comments down below. You know, we'll we'll ask Sam. Um, I'll DM him or whatever, and I'll get get back at you with the with any answers that we can. And yeah. is there anything that you want to um, anything you want to say? Any any messages you want to give to you know any of the younger guys out there before we cut out? Or sure, I mean, for the Western man, you know, work out, uh, go to church, uh, train in bushcraft tactics survival man like things are going to get ugly uh don't believe everything the government says man uh stay true to yourself uh, don't fall don't bend over for anyone and um yeah like uh, wise words man no really wise yeah, words about it. not much for words sometimes but yeah man like uh well you know leaders, man of action um, so be a leader listen man again thanks for coming on and god bless you bro thank you so much as well god bless you.